Hey everyone, so today we're going to be going over the AP Physics 1 Torque and Rotational Motion Review for the AP exam, um, but this is also a great content review for just your in-class exam. So let's get right into it. So the first topic here is Angular Kinematics. So the thing with this unit is it is kind of a summary of everything you've learned so far this year, right? So the first unit is Kinematics, and now we have Angular Kinematics, so it's sort of a spinoff of that. Um, so just a couple key terms here, angular position, which um, we can represent as the displacement is just change in the angle. There is angular velocity, which is represented by this W looking symbol. And then there's angular acceleration, which is this fish looking symbol. Um, so here's a nice diagram of a circle representing um, this angular kinematic uh breakdown so the positive direction is defined as counterclockwise and the negative is defined as clockwise and you can see that as a object rotates that causes a change in that angular uh, position and that angular position is equivalent to one revolution is equivalent to 360 degrees is equivalent to two pi ratings so you really want to drill in and know those convergence because a lot of questions are going to give you something in, let's say, radians, and then they want an answer and say, like, revolution. So definitely know how to convert between those units. Another thing to know is that there is the same angular velocity and acceleration uh, for all points of the same rotation, all right? Um, another thing is that points that are closer to the center have a decreased linear velocity, and we'll talk about that down here so there's less distance in one revolution that is because linear velocity um, corresponds to the change in distance right if you think about it if you have a larger radius it's going to result in a greater change in distance when the rotation rate is the same so let's say you had two circles right one circle was two centimeters in diameter another one was 10 meters in diameter but they both rotate around in two seconds. They complete one revolution in two seconds. The one with the 10 meter radius is going to have a much greater linear velocity. Here's another very important key concept, the connection between um, linear motion and angular motion, right? So for linear, you have your X, which is equivalent to the angular angle, the linear velocity, and the angular velocity, linear acceleration, and angular acceleration and you can easily convert between both linear and angular values by just using the radius so the radius sort of connects both the linear and angular components so this is just a side note regarding forces um, when you have something that uh, has the same rotation rate and you're trying to compare it you can uh, observe it using circular motion right so net force equals ma the acceleration is going to be equal to the centripetal force. So we can just call that V squared of R and then just replace V squared with um, angular velocity times R squared because as we said before, you can connect to linear and angular motion. And that gives you the net force exerted when you're observing it from an angular perspective. All right, so motion graphs. So this is very similar to just linear kinematics. Um, you can see some examples of position over time, angular velocity over time, and angular acceleration over time. Um, so the slope of each one corresponds to uh, each other. So the slope of position over time is these uh, angular velocity, and then the slope of the angular velocity over time is the angular acceleration. And then as for the areas, the slope of the angular acceleration over time is the change that's very important is the change in uh, angular velocity and then the area of the angular velocity over time is the change in angular position and here are the universally accelerated motion equations that you'll be using so this is pretty much identical to the linear equations they use for kinematics and so you want to use these when angular acceleration is constant and you see all the variables are pretty much just swapped with their linear counterpart all right, so the next big topic is rotational torque. So this sort of connects with forces and dynamics, right? So a net torque is going to cause angular acceleration. An equation here is net torque equals 
moment of inertia, which is sort of like mass, except it counts for how mass is distributed, uh, times angular acceleration. So that's very similar to net force equals ma. All right, so a greater moment of inertia will lead to less angular acceleration, given the torque is the same, and vice versa for less moment of inertia. And here's a very nice diagram that sort of shows you how moment of inertia changes based on the concentration of masses. All right, so now let's just talk about the general torque and how it works. So torque is not a force essentially, but it sort of is the thing that causes objects to rotate around a axis or pivot. So it's sort of like a collection of all forces and then is just a, a way to represent them. So... Torque is equivalent to force, which is just the force exerted, times r, which is the distance from the pivot that the force is applied. That can also be interpreted as radius. And then in some examples, you can use sine theta, and theta is measured in respect to the radial line. And here's a wrench, and it's showing you um, how the only component of the force that is perpendicular to the radial line, which is r, uh, is the one that causes the torque. So you can observe in two ways here. If you use this pink angle, you'd have to use cosine to find that perpendicular component. And if you use this uh, green side over here, you use the sine theta. Alrighty, so torques in equilibrium. So here is a example of that where we can see we have a guy standing on one side of this plank thing, but the plank thing since it is off its center of mass, um, all of its mass acts at the center of mass. So it's not depicted nicely here, um, but there is a 100 Newton torque that acts clockwise um, in this problem we can see here. And so the torque that the person is exerting is going to be in the other direction, counterclockwise. And that's going to be the force of gravity. And so here is the equation that shows you how it's being represented in this example. Alrighty, so that does it for this review. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you have a question, drop it down below. And thank you for watching.